أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وفاطم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهر المعصومين ولا نتدامة الباقي لعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم ويقتربت الساعة صلوات المقرب Tonight's Thursday night majlis is going to be shorter than normal instead of half an hour we only spend about 15 maximum 20 minutes because of the annual general meeting continuing after this. Uh, this being the last uh, Thursday of the month, um, before I go to Thursday uh, next week to Masumin Center, and normally we dedicate this Thursday to some of the fiqhi issues, but tonight looking at the uh, time, I would like to respond to a question which has been circulating in the email recently in many discussions about a documentary which has been produced in Iran recently talking about the imminence of the appearance of the Imam. Human beings have this special fascination with knowing the future. You know, people of all religions and cultures always would like to know what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next week, not what will happen next month or next year. Uh, so this is part of human, um, you know, nature. But we have to be careful, especially when we talk about what will happen at the end of the time. When is the end of the time? When you look at the Shias, they are fascinated with this idea. When will Imam come? Can anybody tell us? When will he come? And it's in that context when you see some very unusual socio-political events taking place across the world, which nobody could predict even three months ago. None of the politicians, the uh, social scientists, you know, biggest of the uh, political pundits, nobody knew that there will be a political change in North Africa and Middle East starting with Tunis, catching on to Egypt, where a president who was in power for 30 years uh, had to let go. And then you look at the situation now in uh, Libya, uh, Yemen, Bahrain, uh, and other places also in the, in the same, same region. And it is in that background you see some of the people in Iran, some of the Shias, I wouldn't question their their you know, motives and intentions, but what they did was they went back to the books and started looking at the rivayat and ahadith about the future, what will happen, what are the signs of zuhur, everything they could find, whether the hadith is authentic or weak, they used it. And they, start, they started applying it to the uh, political situation now. And this is a very dangerous trend. You know, this is what I say many times, just knowing Arabic doesn't mean you are alim. Otherwise, every Arab would be an alim by birth. No, knowing Arabic, opening a hadith book and reading for everyone and yourself doesn't mean everything there is correct. You have to have the understanding of what is known as ilm al-hadith, ilm al-rijal, and the overall, you know, uh, expertise in Islamic sciences before you can handle uh, books like Bihar al-Anwar and others. And this is the problem. This documentary has been produced. The Farsi name is Zuhur Bisyar Nazdikast, which means the reappearance of the Imam is imminent, very close. And it has been really produced in a very professional way. If you look at it, uh, you know, you will be very much convinced with the graphics and the presentation done. Um, and, of course, it is coming from Iran, so many people will take it for granted. This is the gospel truth. And what they have done there, they have said, well, well, look at the ahadith there. The prediction are about a person who will appear before the imam. His name would be Shu'ib bin Salih, number one. 
Number two, we know the predictions about a person coming by the name of a Yamani from Yemen. A third person, uh, a Sayyid from Khurasan will come. A fourth prediction is that a Sayyid Hassani from the descendants of Imam Hassan will be killed in Mecca. And that's where the Ahadith say that just 14 days after that, the Imam will make his appearance. These are one of the confirmed uh, reports that we have. Then there is, uh, you know, in this documentary, they say, oh, they, they are narrations that a king will emerge at that time by the name of Abdullah, and they're fitting it to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. And then they say there is another fellow who is going to come by the name of Sufyani, and they are fitting Sufyani on King Abdullah of Jordan. And what they have done when it comes to Shu'ib bin Salih, they played with the words, and they tried to apply that on President uh, Ahmadinejad of Iran. And when it comes to Yamani, they say, well, Yamani doesn't have to be one. There could be multiple Yamanis. One of them is Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah from Lebanon. Other is the leaders of the Zaydi Shias from Yemen. Sayyid Khurasani, you know, uh, the respected leader of Iran, Ayatollah Khamenei, is a Sayyid, as well as from Khurasan. This is how they are, you know, putting two things uh, together there. Uh, when it comes to Sayyid Hassani, they said, no, there are a hadith about him, but that will not be a different person. Sayyid Hassani and Sayyid Khurasani are one and the same. Um, and when it comes to Abdullah and Sufyani, I talked about it. When this documentary became very popular in Iran just recently, Hosea al of Qom decided that it is time for them to speak and put things right in right uh, context. On 13th of March, a group of scholars specializing in the concept of Mahdawiyyat, and so this is just March, 13th of March, a group of scholars uh, who basically are associated with a center in, in Qom known as Markaze Takhassusiyya Mahdawiyyat. It is an institute which specializes in the matters of Imam Zamana, the signs of Zuhur, and everything uh, to do with him. They actually had a meeting. They reviewed the entire documentary. They went through it. And they came back with a very strong, critical review of that documentary. That it is based on very weak ahadith, and it is, is irresponsible you know, to feed people in that way and um, elevate their uh, expectations. And then after 10 years, you come to realize all these things that I believed in are not happening. And that is going to basically shake the faith and iman of those simple individuals to the core. And that is the danger when you have these kinds of irresponsible, you know, uh, use of hadith, whether they are authentic or uh, za'if. Even people like um, Ayatollah Najmuddin Tabasi, who is again specializing in the subject of uh, Imam Mahdi, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif. As well as Ayatollah Nasir Makan Shirazi, he has also publicly uh, spoken against this uh, documentary. Uh, unfortunately, it's already there, uh, even in the Shia t TV uh, website. And now even some of the anti-Iran uh, uh, groups in Euro Europe are actually now producing its uh, English version of it to show that, see, Iran is planning for the major event, um, you know, heralding the, uh, a war, which will be an announcement of the coming of the Mahdi. So they are exploiting that documentary here. Um, just one or two points here. The application of Shu'ib bin Salih to uh, President Ahmadinejad, this is completely out of uh, you know, the reality. They ch played with the words. They say, oh, Shu'ib bin Salih doesn't mean a person. Shu'ib means from Sha'ab, and Sha'ab means masses. And it refers to the leader of the people, so the president of Iran. You know, of course, he's a good person, you know, but, you know, there's nothing to do with him. And most importantly, there are seven ahadiths about this fellow. 
supposedly appearing before Mahdi by the name of Shu'ib bin Salih, but all those seven ahadith are za'if. And that's why in our, you know, main books, you'll never even see his name among the signs of the zuhur of the 12th Imam. When it comes to Yamani, these are one of the, uh, that a person will appear at the end by the name of uh, Yamani, he will be a good person. This is going to happen. Uh, he is the one who is going to confront Sufyani. But the attempt to say there will be multiple, you know, Yamanis and fit it on the leader of the Zaydi Shias in Yemen of the present uh, struggle, or say the Hassan Nasrullah in Lebanon, these are really very irresponsible acts. As far as Sayyid Khurasan is concerned, Ayatollah um, Khamenei, of course, is a respected leader uh, of Iran, which is the only Shia government in the world. But to say that, you know, this applies on him. You know, this is really, uh, this is an example of ghulu. You know, putting somebody on a, on a higher level than what he is supposed to be. The way some of the people do regarding the prophet and the imams, this is what we see is a political ghulu going on. Sayyid Hassani. There are many, many ahadiths that are authentic ones that he will appear. And he will be killed in Mecca because of his faith and being a Shia. And when he will be killed, 14 days after that, the Imam will make his uh, announcement. When it comes to Abdullah, this was, you know, and, and he, you know, our internet is a problem. It's a good thing, but it's also a musibah. Everybody gets somebody, they send to their whole list. It was about a month ago, there was a report saying, oh, Abdullah has died. King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia has died. And then there was a hadith being circulated in Sahih Bukhari, in, in, not Sahih Bukhari, in Bihar al Anwar. They say that there is a hadith saying that one of the signs of the Imam is that when a king by the name of Abdullah will die, they will conceal his death for 40 days. And that is one of the signs of the imminence of the appearance of the Imam. Ten days after that, King Abdullah came back to Saudi Arabia, alive, I don't know from where. You know, we didn't have to wait for 40 days for his death to be concealed. And so that, these are the problems with these kinds of, you know, information also being spread around. You are responsible. Because when you spread that and somebody starts believing in it, later on they realize this is not true. You are actually, you know, weakening their, their belief in the literature of hadith in general. You know, there is only one hadith which talks about a king who will appear by the name of Abdullah. But there are no details about who will that person be or what is the location of his kingdom. Interestingly, the, fa the last king of Banu Abbas, when Baghdad was destroyed by Halaku Khan, his name was Abdullah also. So who knows, maybe it applied to him. And who told you that when a sign will happen, the, uh, the appearance of the imam is imminent, immediately, no. For example, you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, coming of the Rasul, of our Rasul, is a sign of Qiyamah. But it's 14 centuries now, the Qiyamah has not yet come. Well, for us it's 14 century, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the last Rasul, that is the beginning of the end. You know, he said 124,000, but one. Now he's sending the last one. From his perspective, coming of Rasul itself is the beginning of the end. But that end could be centuries. So maybe this Abdullah came and went away. We don't know. Maybe it's the last Khalifa of Banu Abbas. You know, so try to fit in, you know, and then there is another Abdullah. So then they are saying, oh, then maybe that's Sufyani. We don't know there will be more, many more Abdullahs coming later on. We don't even know about it. And when it comes to Sufyani, you know, this is also, uh, we know that the appearance of Sufyani would be there. Sayyid Khurasan will confront him. And Sufyani his, and his army will be destroyed between Mecca and Medina. This will be one of the signs of the zuhur of the Imam. But the details about him. Are the hadith which talk about details of his movement, where he will go, what he will do, those are very za'if, 
and to apply that on the king of Jordan of the present day is not you know, the right way to look at it. What I would emphasize here, uh, making things very brief, is that our responsibility is not to look for the signs or wait for the signs. Our responsibility is to wait for the reappearance of the Imam. We have to be ready. Whether he comes to do, tomorrow, a week from here, a month from now, or a year from now. Our responsibility is not to go and look for the signs. You know, our issue is to live a life where we are ready when he comes. We have to say, Atta'na wa sami'na. We listen to your command and we obey you. It's not our business really to go and find out when he's going to come. So only when we know when he's going to come, that's where we are going to get ready? Is that the mentality? That only when we are told, okay, now he's going to come in one month's time, so get ready. So if I say maybe after five years, so you say, oh, we have time. No. We have to prepare ourselves. The sixth imam was asked by one of his companions about the time of the appearance of the Qa'ime Ali Muhammad salawatullah alayhi. Let me end with this hadith where Imam says, Kadhab al waqqatun, Kadhab al waqqatun, Kadhab al waqqatun. Those who fix the time of the appearance of the Imam are liars, they are liars, they are liars. It's not our business to go and find out the time of the Imam's appearance. Our business and our responsibility is to get ready whenever he makes his appearance. انسان کو ذرا ہوشیار رہنا چاہیے آج کل جو حالات ہیں سوچ سمجھ کے چیزوں کو دیکھیں اور اس کو مانیں اگر علم نہیں ہے تو صاحب نظر سے پوچھئے یہ نہیں ہے کہ کوئی ڈاکیومنٹری بن گئی تو اس کو مان لے کوئی پروفیشنل ڈاکیومنٹری کوئی حجت نہیں ہے ہمارے لیے اور کہاں سے آ رہی ہے وہ بھی ہمارے حجت نہیں ہے everything we have to look at its own value کہ یہ authentic ہے یا نہیں ہے ہمارا کام یہ نہیں ہے کہ ہم پتہ لگائیں امام کب آئیں گے ذرا ڈھونڈ کے نکال لیں نہیں اللہ میاں جو ہیں ان کو غیبت میں رکھ رہے ہیں ہم ڈھونڈ کے نکالتے ہیں وہ برمودہ ٹرائنگل میں ہیں امام اللہ نے اس کو ان کو جو ہے پردے میں رکھا ہے ہم چاہتے ہیں اس پردے کو چاک کرتے ہیں یہ ہمارا کام نہیں ہے کہ امام کہاں ہیں کہاں آتے ہیں ہمارا کام یہ ہے کہ جب وہ آئیں گے وہ پکاریں گے تیار رہے ہیں سقیفہ کے معاملات کے بعد مسجد النبی کے سہن میں علی کا گھر کے دروازہ بھی وہیں کھلتا ہے سہن میں وہاں جو ہیں سلمان امار مقدان دیدشیہ جو تھے پکے یہ بیٹھے ہوئے تھے آپ اس میں بحث کر رہے تھے کہ بھئی ہمیں کیا کرنا چاہیے جنگ لڑنا چاہیے علی کے لیے یا خاموش یہ اختیار کرنی چاہیے پوری بحث ہو رہی تھی سلمان جو سب سے سینئر تھے خاموش بیٹھے تھے کسی نے کہا سلمان سے why don't you participate in this discussion سلمان نے کہا کہ یہ ہمارا کام نہیں ہے ہمارا کام یہ ہے کہ ہم دروازے کو دیکھتے رہیں کہ علی جب اس دروازے سے نکلیں گے ان کے ہاتھ میں تلوار ہے یا نہیں ہے یہ ہمارا تمہارا کام نہیں ہے کہ بیٹھ کے یہاں بحث کرو کہ ہمیں کیا کرنا چاہیے وہ ہمارے امام ہیں ہمارا کام یہ ہے کہ دیکھیں وہ اگر نکلتے ہیں تلوار کے ساتھ تو ہماری تلوار بھی نکلے اور اگر علی تلوار بغیر نکلتے ہیں تو ہم بھی تلوار نہیں نکالیں گے یہ جذبہ ہے اطاعت کا وہی آپ کربلا میں دیکھتے ہیں جناب عباس کے شہاد شجاعت کو دیکھیں بہادری کو دیکھیں مقصد خلقت کو سمجھیں کہ ان کی والدہ سے عمل المومنین نے عقد کیوں کیا تھا لیکن کمال عباس کا تلوار چلانے میں نہیں ہے کمال عباس کا اطاعت حسین میں حسین نے کہا کہ خیموں کو ہٹانا ہے عباس نے خیموں کو ہٹا دیا آشور کے دن بھی عباس آخر میں آتے ہیں مولا کے پاس یہی کہا تھا نا کہ مولا ہمارا نفس جب تنگ کر رہا ہے ان کفار سے ہمیں لڑنا ہے اس وقت امام حسین علیہ السلام نے بس بھروسے کو دیکھئے اور اسی پر ہم مجلس کو ختم کرنا چاہیں گے 
امام نے عباس کے قد و قامت کو دیکھا اور کہا کہ عباس ادا مزیتا تفرق عسکری اگر تم چلے جاؤ گے تو میرا لشکر ختم ہو جائے گا ازدارہ نے حسین عباس نے یہی کہا ہے کہ مولا اب وہ لشکر کہاں اس وقت حسین یہی کہنا چاہتے تھے عباس جب تک تم زندہ ہو میرا میرے لیے پورا لشکر زندہ ہے بس بچوں کی علتش کی آواز آئی اور عباس کو ایک بہانہ مل گیا حسین نے کہا عباس جا کے پانی کا انتظام کرو وہاں جنگ کی اجازت کی بات نہیں تھی تلوار لے کے نہیں جاتے ہیں پانی کی سبیر کے لیے جاتے ہیں ازداران حسین یہ مظلومیت عباس کی منفرد ہے ہر شہید کربلا کا اس حالت میں مرا ہے کہ وہ جانتا تھا جو ہو سکتا تھا جو حکم تھا ہم نے عمل کیا ہے لیکن ہائے عباس حسین نے کہا تھا پانی لے آؤ بچوں کے لیے لیکن ہم جب پانی لے کے آئے ایک تیر چلتا ہے مشکیزے پر وہ پانی نہیں بہا تھا بلکہ یہ تیر عباس کے روح اور نفس پہ لگا تھا ادا لانت اللہ علی القوم الظالمین سیعلم اللذین ظلموا ای منقلب ینقلبون خدا ان رزق کے لیے بات قبول فرما ہمارے گناہ کو بخش دے ہماری توفیقات میں اضافہ فرما ایمان کے ظہور میں تعجل فرما ربنا تقبل منا انک انت السمیع ولا اہل بیتہ الطیبین الطاہر المعصومین واللانت الدامت الباقی العدائهم من الان الى قیام یوم الدین أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم واقتربت الساعة صلوات المغفرات Tonight's Thursday night Majlis is going to be shorter than normal Instead of half an hour we only أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وفاتم المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد I would like to respond to a question which has been circulating in the email recently in many discussions about a documentary which has been produced in Iran recently talking about the imminence of the appearance of the Imam. Human beings have this special fascination with knowing the future. You know, people of all religions and cultures always would like to know what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next week, not what will happen next month or next year. Uh, so this is part of human um, you know, nature, but we have to be careful, especially when we talk about what will happen at the end of the time. When is the end of the time? When you look at the Shias, they are fascinated with this idea, when will Imam come? Can anybody tell us when will he come? And it's in that context when you see some very unusual socio-political events spend about 15, maximum 20 minutes because of the annual general meeting continuing after this. Uh, this being the last uh, Thursday of the month, um, before I go to Thursday uh, next week to Masumin Center, and normally we dedicate this Thursday to some of the fiqh issues, but tonight looking at the uh, time, 